Today I will be covering AWS Code Pipeline. Essentially, the demonstration today will show you how well AWS as a cloud provider can integrate all of its resources within one single automated pipeline um, and show how well AWS as a cloud provider is when it comes to the communication, uh, cross communication between all of its internal services. So that's gonna pair very nicely uh, with the one of the biggest concepts of DevOps as it is. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So this process can be completed uh, manually through the AWS console, or you can use the CLI tool. Um, of course, the main prerequisites here are you wanna have an AWS account with admin permissions. Um, and then if you're gonna use the CLI tool, you wanna have it configured properly. Um, first, you wanna have it installed, and then you wanna have it configured properly to the account that you'll be using. Um, all these resources to run on. So we're gonna be doing a mix of both today. We've already created the individual resources themselves um, manually. I'll show you how to um, run them automatically through a script that can be called on CLI pipeline at, or the AWS CLI tool itself. And then after, after that is established, we'll go over how to actually write a script to create an, the entire pipeline based off the three resources and just write a simple CLI command to call on that file to automate the process of building it. And that uh, JSON template, which will be the for, uh, the J JSON will be the format used for the template we're creating to build the pipeline. Um, that's obviously can be reusable. Um, yeah. So first things first, your pipeline is going to be interacting with several different resources. Um, obviously, you can see on the side we're using code commit, artifact, build, deploy. So it needs the in S3 bucket. You don't see that there, but we're pushing all of our build artifacts to an S3 bucket, um, which we've already created. So we want to have the pipeline have the right permissions to be able to access all these resources. So we created one right here. This is the name and we attach different policies. So it has full access to the S3 buckets, full access to code commit, code build and Elastic Beanstalk, which is perfect. Those are the resources we're using in our pipeline today. Once it's created, it's going to give you an, an R an ARN number. You want to keep this, um, close by because we'll be using that in our pipeline script. All right, so first things first, after that's created, we want to create an Elastic Beanstalk instance. Um, first, you want to create an application and within that application, you want to create an environment within there. You can create multiple environments within a, a single application. Um, we created the environment within this one um, my application is going to be run on Tomcat. You want to specify the platform. You could use uh, Java, PHP, Python, etc. There's a, many um, supported versions available on AWS. And then after created, it's going to automatically create a security group, an EC2 instance that it'll run on top of, and a load balancer as well. Um, you want to make sure the security group has the proper um, proper parameters and, and, and what, what, however it's going to be accessed and input or um, whatever's incoming into the instance itself. You want to make sure it allows access to what exactly is going to be trying to access the instance itself. So once you do that and you set the security correctly, you're all good to go with the instance. You can um, create it um, via a script um, like right here. Um, this is a this is um, this is obviously created for, uh, for um, options that I specified, but you can specify it however you'd like. Um, it's in a YAML based format. You can this, for instance, you can set this in a specific YAML file itself and run a CLI command to create a Beanstalk instance and call upon a file that includes this 
code right here and it'll automatically create it. So you don't have to do it in the console itself, right? Um, yeah, so once you do that, you wanna create a code commit repository to store your source code. So we have it stored right here. Um, I had mine originally on my local machine, which I initialized the repository and pushed it into this, um, into this repository in my code commit. If you have yours in GitHub, Bitbucket, ECR, if it's containerized, there's plenty of ways to, you know, um, um, put, put it into your pipeline. I wanted mining code commit and I'll be demonstrating how to use code commit today. Um, but like I said, instead of using code commit, you can use GitHub, Bitbucket, ECR. So, and there's plenty of others. So after doing that and pushing, um, my source code that was on my local machine into my AWS code commit repository that was established. Again, you could do that um, via the AWS CLI tool as well. Um, this is the basic code to do so as well. You could run that on a simple code, like a simple command or put that in a file and then run the command to call that file, All right? So boom, that's good. Now, next step, you want to create a build, a build project, All right? So the build project is just going to be your basic build uh, configuration and uh, configuring your build environment. Um, I created one right here. Now, this is basically, this is why you want to do this in a uh, sequential fashion, because um, once you build this, you want to already have your code commit repository built because it's going to once your once your pipeline brings in the code from code commit then it's going to push it to the build stage so the build stage must be must know what it's looking for so it, you uh, put the name of the repository here um, yeah and then once it goes through there it's going to by default look for a build spec.yaml file when creating the code build project if it's called a different name in your repository, you can you can rename it however you'd like. But for instance, the build spec YAML, I have it to where when it when it runs through this phase, it's gonna run it's gonna look for this file and scan it from top to bottom. It just is a simple Maven cleaning package, which is gonna store those artifacts into the target folder, and it's gonna be named this, right? So that's set. After that is completed, um, yeah we're going to create our code pipeline. Now, when you create the code pipeline, you can do this manually. You'll specify the source where it comes from, um, the building phase, how it will be built and deploy phase. Um, yeah, and it's gonna do that automatically. And you can configure it to where it starts immediately um, on any changes that are pushed to the repository. So, We'll demonstrate that below. We obviously don't have a pipeline right now. I'll show you how to do so um, just by running the CLI uh, command. All right. So, so right here, this is my project directory. So you see the file is right here, um, which is this JSON file. Um, as you see here, we have the ARN number that was generated when we created our IAM role, right? We're gonna do that. We're creating the pipeline this name, so look out for that once we create it. And it contains the three stages, source, build, deploy. So each stage is going to reach out to the resources we already just created. Um, of course, the source, the repository, is Boylan's code commit repo, the project name for our code build, testing build. Um, and yeah, for the deploy, we use Beanstalk and we call it the environment name testing, or no, application name testing, environment name, testing environment three. So we'll call upon that and we'll see exactly what it does. And it should display something similar to this. So it should show you the format that you specified in the file. Um, looks like it went through pretty good, went through all the stages. That's good. Now, if we refresh, 
we should see it automatically pop up and it should immediately start the process. So that was quick. It um, brought in the source from AWS code commit and it is currently building the project. After it builds it, it will deploy it. Um, while this is running, this will take a minute or two. I will show you um, the how we're going to set up and how we're going to test it once it's deployed. So it's going to deploy it um, to the to the environment that we created. Now, once it does, you can also check the events. It provides you with logs to check those as well. Um, but the events, it'll start updating as soon as it starts to be deployed here. Um, we can use the domain to reach it. Um, you can also use the EC2 DNS address as well. Um, but once it displays, we're going to use that. Attach the endpoint for our REST API endpoint, um, which right here, it's just a simple microservice. It's got a model class um, for the data that we want to use. And plenty of um, endpoint uh, request methods. We're not going to get into each one today, but just for demonstration purposes, we're going to show you um, a simple get request for data that's already stored once we run the application itself. We'll just need a backslash. It's just going to be the indicator for the um, get endpoint um, for the specific one. All right. So, and then also quickly noted, Beanstalk by default runs on port 5000. So in your applications.properties file, you want to be able to specify that um, instead of 8080 or any other port. You can change this, of course, but by default, you want to make sure that it knows the port that it's running on. So we're going to do that. And right here, it's still building. You can check the details as well. Um, right so it's going through the details the build phases everything you can check to see if it's completed um, which it has which is a great feature of code build and if you go back to the side to your pipelines to check the status it should start deploying now at this point when it starts deploying in real time you can actually see um, you can see it updating um, accordingly so right now it's updating successfully completed perfect all right now we'll go ahead and double check everything is looking good um, if you want you can request logs um, by go to full and you can download um, the file to check and if we want to double check updated completed successfully you'll be able to tell everything um, and to run by s3 bucket for instance you can double check this is the bucket we looked at you can see how the build artifacts are generated here now if we go back we see that it's successfully deployed which is great now we can use your environment's domain name attach the port 5000 on the end. Again, that's optional. You can configure it to where you don't have to do that. Um, for this instance, we're just going, we're just doing that this way. Um, this is the address, we put 5000 on the end. And yeah, we'll update it. Boom, here we go. Now this is the REST API endpoint um, with the data that we stored right here. Perfect, and then you can also, if you want to, instead of using through the browser, if you want to test other endpoints like post, delete, and put, you can test them here. Um, um, to take it a step further, I'm using the EC2 DNS address that this Elastic Beanstalk is running off of to show you that both um, addresses will work at the same time. So boom, you see that, that worked. And that is um, um, this DNS address right here. Alrighty, thank you.